My name is uh, Mons Lykke and I'm the CEO of Ecomove. And uh, as said, Ecomove is a Danish company. And uh, at Ecomove, we develop feel-good vehicles. And uh, feel-good is about zero emission. It's about zero smog. It's about zero particles, zero noise. But it's also about high utility value, easy in use, getting in and out, uh, park, carry stuff, uh, decorate and adapt. It's about low running cost and it's about value for money. Um, I brought a small video, so uh, let's see if it works. Cubic is a result of starting all over. We found solutions to make the car easier to handle in the city, less energy consuming, less noisy, safe and flexible. Uh, the car is not actually that low and not that sporty, <laughs> <laughs> but it does look nice. Um, <clears throat> the Cubic, as it's called, um, it's actually optimized for low running cost. The full vehicle is uh, well below 500 kilos and uh, X batteries, and that means more miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, it does regenerate the braking power and it has very few moving parts, uh, about one fifth of a traditional car. It's actually also optimized for everyday use since the bodywork is very robust, it's uh, flexible, and it's uh, rigid to scratches. It's even fast to replace body parts. And with the motors situated in the wheels, it's been possible to create a really compact car with lots of space. It's only three meters times one meters and 75, which is about 5% bigger than a smart car. It uh, carries up to six seats or two uh, cubic meters of goods. It's got sliding doors, one of each side. It's got a completely flat floor, uh, so it's very easy to decorate. It actually takes an EU pallet, and it turns like a London taxi. The car market is growing. In China, I read... Um, an, an investigation by the official uh, China government, they expect in 10 years to do uh, 50 million new cars, and today it's about 20 million cars. And even the EV market is growing, um, and it's driven by what we could call the green revolution. Um, here in London, we have the congestion charges, but it's also in Stockholm, it's also in Milan and Singapore, and it's showing up everywhere. And what we know is there's a lot of incentives around the world uh, to buy electric vehicles. What we have seen today is that most of the well-known car manufacturers are doing electric vehicles. Uh, but also new players is uh, getting into this market, and there is room for us. Uh, we could think that in the future there might be a consolidation. The Cubic will get into the market due to um, its compact size, its high utility value, and the low running cost. And it does highway speed. The first customers for the Cubic is uh, fleet owners and public uh, customers. One of the unique features about the Cubic 
is the power pack system. In the sandwich construction of the car, uh, there's room for battery packs. Packs can be removed and replaced, or packs can be added. With the lithium-titanium batteries we use now, we can host up to 30 kilowatt hours, meaning a range of 300 kilometers. But soon we will have up to 60 kilowatt hours, meaning a range of up to 600 kilometers. But it's open to new battery technology and other technologies like fuel cells. So it's actually both a battery uh, electric vehicle and a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. The Cubic will be built to order and it's designed for fast, easy and custom assembly. The in-wheel motor units is a complete uh, driveline including suspension system and EcoMove has an IP on that. Together with the lightweight chassis, the Powertronic system and the steering braking assembly, we got a complete rolling chassis. On top of that, the greenhouse structure, the bodywork, and then the glazing and the body shells and the interior, and that's built to order. Assembly facil facilities are not complex, and they can be situated around the world, close to the markets. EcoMove was founded in 2009 by uh, Mikkel and Rasmus, with financial support from two local investors. The current funding is a little bit less than two million pounds. And the management team has experience from uh, other vehicles, like the one on uh, the left on the screen. It's a lightweight uh, sports car, formula-type formula car. Uh, this February, we got an uh, award by Frost & Sullivan, being best early stage investment opportunity. And this autumn, we will hit the roads with uh, the third prototype of the Cubic. I have to go faster. We've got a lot of press. And with almost no uh, sales effort, we've done a lot of letter of intents, uh, basically for fleet owners. Uh, I can mention the Danish Postal as one of them, uh, and a lo uh, local uh, municipalities. <laughs> But we also have uh, prominent clients among Prince Charles have been uh, looking at the car. We need about uh, six million pounds to get into production, and that's for tooling, for organization, and for homologation, and testing, testing, testing. Uh, the business model is quite simple. <coughs> Sales of cars and licensing and sales of technology and components. Break-even is supposed to be 2015. It will be. And it, we will be profitable in 2017 by building 16,000 cars. So this is a feel-good investment. But if you are in it for the money, feel free. <laughs> Thank you very much. Unless I'm mistaken, you'll be the first OEM in the last 100 years who spent £6 million and makes a profit in the next three years. Is that correct? You're right. <laughs> I guess you're right. Do you need just £6 million? Well, then we're into production. We need, we need more money to uh, launch the car on the market. Right, roughly. What's the mag magnitude? Double. Double the £6 million. Yes. Okay. Do you believe that? Yes, okay. I do believe that. Why, why do you think this car will compete against other EVs on the market from very well-known manufacturers? What's the kind of unique proposition that you, you have here? Uh, we have several unique uh, propositions, uh, but one of them is it's actually um, very flexible, so you can decorate it like you want it. The, the floor is flat, so you can actually put six seats in there, or you can use it as a, a delivery van. A small one, though, but, uh, but as a delivery van. So the utility value of this car is, is uh, higher 
than cars in the same range. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it's very compact, not much bigger than a smart car. Mm -hmm. uh, let me, so the, um, I'm just trying to get my head around who the consumer is. Is this, this is, this just does a lot of things, but what's the brand concept? What's, what's the proposition and who is gonna buy that proposition? We actually believe that the first customers is going to be fleet owners uh, and municipalities. And how have you tested that in terms of their, is it a relevant and meaningful proposition to them? Yes, it is. It's relevant. How have we tested that? Uh, we have spoken to the municipalities and they have actually um, signed LO, LOIs with us. And in terms of um, the production, you said testing, testing, testing. It seems an awful lot to be done to make it roadworthy and to be licensed and for insurance purposes as well. Um, how certain are you that you can be able to pass those? Sorry? How confident can you be that you can pass all the necessary hurdles? Well, we are actually quite confident. We are working together with the homologation uh, companies, uh, TÜV uh, in Germany, uh, and they are quite confident that we can pass uh, that part as well. Uh, we recently were, were recognized as a car manufacturer, which is the first uh, step in that, uh, that direction. Do you have any idea for other car manufacturers how long it takes for them to get uh, a new model, brand new model, from prototype to being roadworthy and insurable? Yes, we expect uh, from now on uh, 12 to 18 months from this stage. Is that typical for the market? Uh, I, I don't know. I couldn't really tell if it's typical uh, for, for them, but we've seen similar situations. Uh, Mia is one of them. I actually believe there's a Mia car here today. Um, I've looked at a lot of electric vehicle things in the past, particularly those wanting to sell to uh, fleet vehicle uh, type uh, ownership. Uh, and one of the problems that people haven't really seen but, or come across is that most of the fleet owners like to lease their vehicles. And the fundamental problem about electric vehicles is they they got no proven residual value. So I know it's a slightly technical issue. Uh, have you sort of looked into this? Uh, because that's what's stopping most of them actually adopting these vehicles. Yes, at this moment we have uh, signed um, a contract with the Danish leasing company okay. that want to lease it out. And we are looking at both leasing models, both financially and I forgot the name on the other one. Yeah. Okay. You talk about volumes as they relate to break even in 2015 and being profitable in 2017? Yes, the, we are not looking at the same volume as the uh, traditional car manufacturers. We are looking at lower volumes. Uh, we will reach break even in a, f a, f a few thousand um, cars because the materials in the car are quite different, as you saw on, on the slides. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.